Hello, and welcome to Focus, the Catholic Answers podcast for living, understanding, and defending your Catholic faith. I'm Cy Kellett, your host. And this week, as this episode is posted, we're commemorating the anniversary of the dropping of nuclear weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's commemorated at the beginning of each August. And so we thought we'd take this opportunity to look at a little bit of video uh, from Prager University, a very fine uh, outfit on the internet that posts videos on various topics. In this one, a Catholic priest, Father Wilson Miscampbell, professor of history at Notre Dame University, explains why he feels that we should absolutely be supporting the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Let's take a, let's start by a quick listen to what Father had to say. President Harry S. Truman's decision to use atomic weapons against the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki proved to be one of the most controversial decisions in American history. As the years have passed, the controversy has only intensified. More and more people, both in America and abroad, have condemned both President Truman and America for that decision. But this criticism is based on limited historical knowledge of both the situation Truman confronted and the basis for his decision. First of all, what we need to say is uh, Father Miss Gamble is wrong in that. Not all of the opposition to what uh, the United States did in dropping the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki is rooted in history at all, or uh, that is a, a misunderstanding of history. There's another dimension to human life, an entire dimension that Father refuses to engage with. And I have to say, it's somewhat disturbing to see a Catholic priest in the Roman collar representing himself as an authority at Prager University who refuses to confront the moral dimension, the moral side of human life. History can't tell us what we should do. It can only tell us what was happening. And we can concede everything that Father says about the history. As a matter of fact, Father is a very good historian. And we do concede every, every bit of what he says about the history. But that doesn't mean we have to agree with his conclusion. As a matter of fact, we don't and should not agree with his conclusions about the conduct of the war in the dropping of those bombs. Here's a little bit more of what Father had to say. The atomic bombs forced Emperor Hirohito to understand clearly, and in a way his military leaders refused to comprehend, that the defense of the homeland was hopeless. Father is unquestionably right about that. The destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki terrorized the emperor into quitting the war. And that's a good thing. Giving up the war was a, a good thing. So we don't argue with the historical facts here. Does that mean just because there was an, a historical efficiency was achieved that it's okay to mass murder women and children? It's very disturbing to see a Catholic priest arguing that. And that's what we're going to talk with our president, Chris Check about. He's a historian in his own right. And he is a former artillery officer for the United States Marine Corps. And here's what he had to say about the ethical question, the moral question, the question that Father Miss Campbell does not deal with when it comes to the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Chris Jack, President of Catholic Answers, thank you for being here with us to talk about perhaps uh, one of the most controversial things that comes up at this time of every year. Yeah, get ready for the emails. Uh, August 6th, uh, 1945, the United States uh, dropped a, a, a nuclear bomb on Hiroshima, and then August 9th dropped a nuclear bomb on Nagasaki, followed shortly thereafter by the surrender of Japan and the end of the Second World War. So that's why this comes up every year at this time. Uh, we remember it. It doesn't seem like there's too many people still uh, debating the morality of this thing, except us Catholics. It seems like here in the U.S., Catholics are about 50-50 on this. I think among evangelical Protestants, probably. Is there? Uh, yeah, con okay. conser whatever conservative means, you know, Repu Republicans or e evangelical Protestants, you probably find a majority supportive of the act. But yeah, for, for my principal interest now is, or question, why are there... Why are there still Catholics who tried to defend a gravely immoral act? Am, am I giving it away too early? Here? No, I think, no, I think <laughs> that, 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 why are there Catholics uh, trying to defend a gravely immoral act? In particular, because uh, 
It doesn't comport with uh, 2,000 years of uh, church teaching, the natural law, scripture, and the, and, the, and, and the statements of popes, the Vatican Council, uh, in the wake of the event. Yeah. Okay. And, and a very, very fine theologians. Uh, I think of Fulton Sheen, who called it our national sin. Uh, did he really? I didn't yeah. know that. God bless Fulton Sheen. Well, but, uh, but we're Americans well, he's, first. Who's, who's, I mean, what, venerable Fulton Sheen? Where is he? Who knows? Yes. Well, it's some, well, some well we, know, we know his relics got brought back to Peoria, right? Uh, do we know that? Okay, I, think so. I, okay. I haven't been Sorry. kept up. Sorry, I apologize uh, for that. But. Yeah, our national sin. Yeah, our well, national sin. Well, um, it's funny because I was talking with my mother and father who were in their 80s, and so they were children at the time of the, the bombing, not just uh, just a few weeks ago. And I said, what did people think when this happened? And they both said... Everybody knew this was horrible. Everybody yes. knew. Now, th that didn't mean that everybody knew it was immoral, but everybody knew, oh, this is something horrible has well, happened. I mean, I would even, I, I think it's safe to say Truman knew it was a horrible thing. Oh, good Lord. And then he, and then when he was, when, and, 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 and it's in, it's in the, the correspondence when there's uh, the suggestion of dropping a third, he says, no, no, I, the thought, you know, the, the thought of another hundred thousand lives is too horrible to contemplate. Right. right. So, I mean, he knew what he was doing. Right, uh, right. But here, uh, recently on um, at Prager University, Prager, Dennis Prager has this thing called Prager University, which does wonderful work in many, many areas. But you said, why do why are Catholics still debating this? They got a Catholic priest from Notre Dame to explain to us why really there should be no controversy about this. If you understood the history of it, you would be completely supportive of what Harry Truman uh, and the United States Army Air Corps did in dropping these bombs. Yes, Father uh, Miss Campbell. Wilson uh, Miss Campbell, I think is yeah. Right, Father and, Wilson Miss Campbell, a, a historian from Notre Dame University. Yeah, he actually wrote a book, um, and now I'm forgetting the full name of it. But nonetheless, the gist of his argument is uh, his little four minute video distills what I think is the principal argument, uh, and that is uh, it ended the war. Right. And, and it was, and, and because it did, uh, it was the right decision. In fact, George Weigel said this in First Things uh, within the past couple of years. It was the correct decision. I wasn't aware of that. That was the word that Weigel used. Now, does he mean morally correct? He doesn't exactly say he's ambiguous. But this uh, is not a thing to be ambiguous about. No, because, because you, you can solve a lot of problems by killing innocent people. And this was well. Split. By the way, this is what the this is what the pro-abortion industry says. You know, yeah. we we will spare that child a life of uh, poverty, right, uh, and misery. Uh, by, and the mother by, can go to college. Yes, by by killing him. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So the the so then the debate becomes: Well, were these uh, military targets? And the here a raw fact is helpful, and I think clarifying. Almost everyone who died was a civilian. Well, so the, that the, the question of whether they were military targets must include the actual historical fact that almost everyone who died was a civilian. Yeah, the vast majority. And between the two cities, what is it, about 130, 140,000, something well, like that? No one's uh, completely certain, but somewhere between about 100,000 and 140,000 over the first four months after the bombing died. Right. So if, in fact, we were... Uh, intending to target factories, for example, that were supporting the the military machine of Japan, if we could even call it that at that, at that point, point in the right. war, yes. right? I mean, no air power, right? Right? Uh, then, then we would have dropped the bombs on the suburbs where all the factories were, but instead, the city centers were the were ground zero, where the civilian population was the highest. Right. And so then the question that uh, defenders will raise is, well, in modern warfare, who who is a civilian? So there uh, is an answer to that yeah, question. Yeah, they the way, there they pose the yeah. question as if, yes. well, there's no the Japanese. It was all military. They were all going to fight. Yes. They, they, yes. You know, the, my favorite is there is actually a difference between a civilian and a military person. There my, is a, a def, definitive difference. Yeah. My favorite is uh, the eight year old Japanese boys were sharpening the bamboo sticks. <laughs> so, so you can kill eight year old <laughs> Japanese boys. <laughs> right. Like, no, it, precisely. And, and, and it, 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 it's horrifying. And I, I don't mean to to uh, to, to, to laugh about it, but it, it, it's a laughable argument because we can. Now, 
I recommend uh, Elizabeth Anscombe, who was a philosopher at, at Oxford at the time. She had a fellowship, and Oxford was going to give, so this is after the war, right. they were going to give an honorary degree to, to Harry, Truman. Harry Truman. And she wrote uh, an argument opposed to it. it, and you can find it online. It's called Mr. Truman's Degree. I recommend it. One of the points, and she, she takes up this question in, at length, who, who's innocent and who isn't? And, and, and one of the things that she very cogently argues in there is that simply because lines are difficult to draw doesn't mean that there are not obvious groups on either side of the line. Exactly. Well, a point well made. Right. Yeah, That's exactly right. Absolutely. So to be sure... Uh, most of the people who died in the uh, bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and by the way, in the fire bombings of Tokyo and Dresden, uh, were innocent civilians. Right. They were innocent civilians, and right. this was the this was the intent of the dropping of the bombs. They were acts of terror. They were it, it, they were they were designed to incite terror. So that you would re, uh, re resign from the battlefield. Right. The, the, the idea was to so terrorize the Japanese that there was no question that you had to leave the battlefield. And in so many ways, Sai, and I don't mean to get too far afield because Father Miss Campbell can, can get us caught up in the argument of was this a strategically uh, the, a, a good move? I don't even like to use the word, word good here because that— suggests right. something moral. Was it effective? It was effective. He uses the word efficient, right? Does he? Yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. maybe it, it was an efficient. efficient or effective, but, but yeah, right. It, right. right. Yeah, but, uh, but our, our concern is, was it a morally just act? Yeah. And the Catholic Church has uh, a very, very long standing tradition of evaluating actions leading to and in the course of prosecuting a war that date back as far as St. Augustine, who actually uses uh, pre-Christian thinkers like Cicero sure. in, in developing the just war theory. And it, 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 one of these principles is that non-combatants, innocent civilians, uh, are not to be harmed, are not to be deliberately harmed. And this is stated in the Catechism today. Right. And uh, it really couldn't be any clearer. It, it does seem to me that I agree with you. The, the, the I mean, the, the teaching couldn't be any clearer. You cannot deliberately attack innocence. You cannot do that in the womb. You cannot do that when they are elderly and inconvenient. You cannot do that when they are Japanese citizens uh, going about their business, doing their marketing for the day. You cannot attack innocent civilians you cannot and in and, 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 and the world of modern warfare of course this takes on a, a, a whole new scale that, right. that, that that magnifies the evil and makes it even more horrifying so the catechism quotes uh gaudium et spes every act of war directed to the indiscriminate destruction of whole cities or vast areas with their inhabitants is a crime against god and man which merits firm and unequivocal condemnation. A danger of modern warfare is that it provides the opportunity to those who possess modern scientific weapons, especially atomic, biological, or chemical weapons, to commit such crimes. That is precisely That's what, what was done. <laughs> And Eric the Schumann church says Nagasaki. you can't do and that. Yep. And half of American Catholics say, well, in this case, you could, because as Father uh, uh, Wilson, uh, uh, Miss Campbell, Ms. Campbell yeah. says, well, you, if you really understood the history, you'd understood how, how many lives this saved. Yeah. So th this does interest me yeah. why American Catholics in as large numbers as you say, and I think it is probably about half, though I don't, you know, the, the last survey I saw on this was from 2009, so maybe it's changed. But um, but let's just say it's about half. Uh, so I, I just, I, I kind of wonder why. And I think there's a couple of reasons. Yes. Um, okay. So, uh, 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 okay. So go ahead. Well, so give, one, give reasons, one yeah. I think is just the whole question of distance. This, uh, this fascinates me because I read your article about this, and this is uh, fascinating. You, you, you... Yeah, so there's actually a Catholic uh, uh, theorist, um, his uh, uh, he, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. He's a really fine thinker. I met him one time a long time ago, and he's actually developed a whole 
uh, school, if you will, of what he calls killology. Yeah. And he wrote a book called On Killing. And the uh, data that he collects and the no numbers are overwhelming is that if you're, if, you, if you're proximate to the act of killing, so for example, you're going to ram your bayonet into the abdomen of your enemy, uh, there's going to be some reluctance on the part of the soldier. Yeah. Um, but uh, he found no instances right. of reluctance. And there's a ton of data, for example, of an artilleryman or in the case of uh, a, 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 a fire bomber of Dresden. Uh, and to use the example we're talking about today, Colonel Tibbetts, Colonel Tibbetts yeah. was, the, was the flyer of uh, the Enola Gay. Right. And this man said he slept well every night, felt no guilt for what he did. And in fact, at air shows after the war, reenacted the dropping of the atomic bomb. I mean, can you imagine something so horribly viable, uh, but the, the, vi vile? The, this sort of, sort of st continuing to stir up his jingoism yeah. as a post hoc, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, yeah. affirmation of the event. Right, right. Which is, I think is, and here's where it's we get ghastly. to the nub of why we have to have these conversations is that that uh, kind of backward looking defensiveness about what we did makes it more likely that we'll do it again. And, oh. and if it's not us, somebody else will do it again because we justified it so many times that, that so you have to have these conversations and they have to be stark and, and brutal. But here, uh, to, to get to the brutal facts, so this is what fascinates me about your argument about distance. Would Father um, Miss Campbell argue that if you could send Marines in and one by one shoot the women and children of Hiroshima until the emperor... Uh, gave in that you should do that because it would save millions of lives right or would he say no that is horrific you can't have the marines do that because the proximity of putting the bullet in the brain of a child may is much more viscerally convincing than just blowing up an entire city yeah but the consequence is the same it's the same yeah it's you get the same the, result the innocent you terrorize child the is emperor dead. yeah by killing the children of japan yeah yeah. Well, I would hope he would react badly to that. Uh, or would he say, well, millions of lives were saved and the Japanese were never going to surrender. And this was the only option uh, because it was going to be, uh, I, I forget the uh, Okinawa all the way up and down or whatever the example he gave was, you know, all the way up and down the, uh, the islands. All of these things pad the fact that, no, what you're saying is take 100,000 civilians yeah. and put a bullet in their head one by one. Yeah. You would not say yes and, to that, and, and, but, and, but you'll say yes to blowing them up from the sky. Right. Yes. And, and I don't mean to distract from what you and I are really getting at here, which is an evaluation of the mor morality of the act. But I think even these charges now that uh, millions of lives were saved, that, that even the estimates of the War Department at the time I think a land invasion, they guessed, maybe would have cost 50,000 American lives, something like that. Now, I'm not in favor of that. That's worth saving. Yep. 50,000 American lives is yep. worth saving. Yeah, yeah but, but I'm just saying that, that the justifications for right. the act tend to be exaggerated After in the, the data. Yes. In, the, in, in the data. I, I, well, but, Eisenhower, for example, didn't think that. He said Eisenhower, they were, they were Halsey, beaten. Nimitz, yeah. all of these guys, soldiers, yeah. right? Who Sailors, were there yeah. or, or well, you know, a, a were serious the military minds said, this is not a, 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 a weapon of military use to us. Yeah. It, it, but to your point, Cy, Americans are very good at justifying our, ourselves. Yeah, right. And we have a history of this. And I think this is the second reason, okay. a kind of Americanism. I think this is the second reason why American Catholics embrace or accept at least in the large numbers they do, because it's a kind of a, it, 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 it is, it's a kind of a, my country right or wrong. So the devil is at his best when he is using our strengths against us. And we have strong patriotic feelings in this country. Yes. We truly do. I mean, I don't think 
other countries fly flags on, on Independence Day, you know, the way we do. And well, we of. have an awesome flag and an awesome country. <laughs> well, so. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, yeah. So. <laughs> right. Well, yes. Okay. Very well. So, and then listen, I'm very proud to, to be, yeah. in, in, to, to, to live in America, to have served in the Marine Corps. Um, but we're very good at justifying our actions, and we have been for a long time. We think about the westward expansion, uh, that whole idea of manifest de destiny, for example, and the justifications, mm -hmm. the frankly divine rhetoric that was used uh, to say, you know, we, uh, we represent uh, the incarnation in the new world against the, the heathen, against the barbarian, yeah. and we're bringing it west. Yeah. And this is how guys like Herman Melville, for example, spoke during the westward expansion. So, so, we, so we have this um, shining city on a hill image that begins with the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Uh, uh, Kennedy used it. Reagan used it. And we're America. We're number one, greatest country ever. I recently heard a Catholic priest say that from the pulpit. I mean, now, again, wealthiest, most powerful, um, but uh, when I think about literature, I'm going to go with England, right? Uh, when I think Russia. about <laughs> Ru Ru Russia, sure. <laughs> no, you went with England. Yeah, okay, no, I, I, look, I, I, think I, I could be arguing into Russia, right? Well, there if, is Shakespeare. When, I, when, I, when <laughs> I think about painting, yeah. I'm, gonna, I, I'm now— Ireland. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say Italy, architecture, France. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in, in any case— uh, I know some people are going to accuse me of being un-American. Again, I wish to underscore I served in the Marine Corps. It's not that. But but, but I, we get caught up in an enthusiasm about ourselves, and it's the devil taking our patriotic uh, uh, feelings and converting them into nationalism. Yeah. And he turns them against us. And he turns them against and so, so I think that's the other reason. Well, America did it, so that can't have been wrong right. that we did it. And plus, I because we're America, and there is also a defensiveness about the Second World War generation. Yeah. And I, people need to know the Second World War generation was not of one mind about this. Many heroes, Medal of Honor winners, and of the Second World War said never would they have done this. So I, we don't have to defend them by defending the actions of the people who did this. Even if we say we defend the people, I mean, I, even if I say I don't want to be angry at Harry Truman, I don't ever want to have the responsibility that Harry Truman had at those moments. I don't, I don't know what I would have done given that that's all fine. I, but yeah. in retrospect, you have to be morally clear or in the future, you will not be morally clear. Yes. And this is not a war that can be won. What do you mean? Well, what? I'm just saying that that the, uh, um, the 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 presence of nuclear weapons now, or weapons of mass destruction, so we can throw in biological or chemical in there, are, are, are so prevalent that it, I, 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 I believe yeah. that once that Pandora's box gets reopened, how does one even talk about nuclear strategy? No. I mean, what what is, what does that mean? No. What what? what this is why I told you earlier this morning when we were talking. I, I, I think the I think Stanley Kubrick really is the guy who's kind of gotten his imagination around the insanity of it. Right, right. With, With uh, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, yeah, yeah. A brilliant performance, but there by Peter Sellers because it is so evil, and it's the combination of evil and, and insane. Yeah, right, right. There isn't, a, and and the. Uh, there's a certain way in which, I, I mean, our generation, I don't know, we were raised in a time where nuclear war with the Soviet Union was a consideration. Like they, like, I think now people feel like, well, we've crossed that, uh, the danger period. But I think that they're exactly wrong about that. The danger period is in front of us, not behind us. And that people are going to use nuclear weapons again. I do. I will say, I don't, I don't know... Yeah, I think I, yes, I think that you are right. Um, I'm I'm probably feeling a little complacent, and and I, I should hear what you're saying there a little bit better. Um, but I will say that that Cold War period and mutually assured destruction and detente or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that was a period during which a lot of Ameri a lot of a lot of American Catholics living in that time looked back on. Uh, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and, and justified it yeah. because now 
Well, look uh, at yeah. this conflict we're in with Russia. Right, right. Yeah. So you had to kind of buck up. Yep. You know, yeah, to face so you got to be for this. Right. Yeah. Right. It's so horrible. But it is also the case. I think it is actually reasonable to argue that the Russians, even when they were uh, uh, under the influence of the evil communists, they are, they're not a people who are suicidal. They're not a people who are insane. And so the fact that it was Russians and Americans facing one another is different than what's going to be the case in the future where individual terrorist cells have these weapons or uh, countries who are run by actual maniacs uh, in a way that as evil as a person like, uh, you know, Khrushchev, for example, uh, or Brezhnev is, there are, there are different forms of evil and some are quite insane and they will fling a nuclear weapon at you so with russia and with the united states of course although we're in the post-christian era now or even anti-christian era these are nonetheless countries both or peoples both that f trace their origins to to christianity right yeah uh and that is not the case with um right some who may potentially hold ha have the use of right and there's weapons. some question about whether we'll still be you know how what what christian vestiges will be left 100 years from now and so you, you i mean i i do think we have to have these conversations because we're to me it seems we're heading into a more dangerous time not less when you see people like uh the the north koreans for example having vast nuclear arsenals and Others are not far behind. I mean, it's not the hardest technical and scientific problem in the world. It, no. it was solved by Americans in 1945. In 2045, a lot more people will have solved it. Yes. We better start dealing with this. Yes. In a more rational way. Yeah. And I think it, I think uh, Catholics need to take the lead. Yeah. And, and we do that first by cleaning our own moral house. Right. Uh, clarifying our own moral thinking, I should say. And and at some points saying things like, you cannot use these weapons morally except in the most uh, unlikely of circumstances where an enemy is masked in a way that, yeah, you could fling a nuclear bomb at the Japanese fleet masked off the coast of, of uh, Pearl Harbor. And I don't think you would actually have a moral, there would be a moral problem with that. It's extremely unlikely that that situation is going to occur and that's the terms under which these are going to be used. Yeah, the, 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 so, the moral use of these kinds of weapons uh, are, are it, it would, would be a much, much smaller warhead than right. what in the main populates the arsenal. And I think right everybody now. also knows that even if the first use were some moral use, the second use oh, would be escalate, and the third use would be. And... and, uh, and I do think it is to the credit of human of humanity that we haven't yet used them again, and we've had them so long. But the I don't think that we take seriously the possibility that we could get rid of them. I I, I wonder if the like put a little work in. Maybe it's worth having conversations where these things become illegal. Just a couple of years ago, the Holy Father was explicit on this point. He he's, he he says he says the possession of them is immoral. Well, certainly, I mean, if I possessed one, it would be immoral. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and I, I, I don't, I wouldn't want to argue with him, but it's not, none of that's going to happen until we settle. Can you drop bombs on cities and wipe out cities in some circumstances and it's okay? And, the, and until we get to no on that, I don't know that we're going to make progress. St. Paul gave us the answer in Romans a long time ago. Right, we cannot do evil, so that good will come. Right, right. It's explicit, and and so much of the arguing that's going on still among Catholics is this kind of consequentialism, and that is not Catholic moral teaching. It is not, and and it's amazing that you know you have these this tendency to say, well, if you understood the historical moment. You wouldn't be so judgy about this, and the, no, that, and the and the way the Catholic needs to respond is to, is to say, well, if you understood the intrinsic the nature of the act, what the act is, yes, it's right. intrinsic evil. Sai, people make decisions based on consequences. It's a good thing to do, right? Uh, um, you know, you're going to keep your car maintained so that you can get to and from work and be the host of Catholic Answers Live. 
uh, that, that, so, so, so that's a good thing to do. But in the end, uh, the ultimate reason we decide to act or not is, is it good? Is it morally good? Right. Yeah. yeah. And always the deliberate taking of innocent life is morally evil. Always. Always. Yeah. And if we would just be clearer about that. I mean, I, 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 in a certain way, the pro-life movement has helped to, to solidify that in people's and minds. And yet, si, I think you will find people in the pro-life movement, Phyllis Schlafly, for example, uh, mm. founder of Catholic uh, founder of Eagle Forum, God rest her soul, who uh, wrote in the New York Times that the atomic bomb was a gift to the United States by a wise God. Well... <laughs> So, Thank you, Phyllis. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but so you do. Yeah, you, you do kind of wonder because you get people, you get folks quite rightly at, 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 at going to the heart of the matter, saying it's a child. You cannot take the life of an innocent child. And yet, in the question of well, it's an eight-year-old boy in Ground Zero, Nagasaki, in the city center. Nah, then not you so can. much. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Uh, and but and one thing that probably should be said too, there are probably moral. That I'm sure that there are moral uses for nuclear bombs that have nothing to do with warfare. Like I kind of would like to have some to shoot asteroids out of the sky if they're coming at us or something like that. So it just sounds like a movie. Is this, is this a movie? Right. <laughs> just because you don't with like Bruce Willis. Movie. Is this a movie with Bruce Willis? Or I something? think it's several <laughs> movies. <laughs> I think it's just is one Morgan movie. Freeman the president <laughs> in right. this movie? Uh, uh, well, uh, maybe we can sometime have a national holiday in August. We don't have a national holiday in August, and it could be National Peace Day or something. And, and uh, we're, when we have finally dealt with the fact that what we did at Hiroshima and Nagasaki is, uh, was not a moral act. These were not moral acts. These were uh, attacks on innocent civilians, and they should never be repeated. Yeah. Yeah. May God have mercy on us. Praise God. Thank you, Chris. My pleasure, Sai. One thing Chris and I didn't cover is the fact that what many people will argue is there were military targets at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But when people say that, they don't acknowledge that you can attack military targets, just not with nuclear bombs that will wipe out an entire city. The United States clearly had other means to attack military targets. They were doing it all up and down Japan. They could have dropped bombs on those military targets. No one is saying that they didn't have the right to. You just didn't need to use a weapon that wiped out an entire city to do it. And that's clearly not why those weapons were used. They were used for an entirely different reason, having to do with psychology. And that psychology is frankly called terrorism. And it's not upon Catholics in the United States to agree with everything that our government has ever done. No, that's, it's not, that's not an obligation of citizenship. As Catholics, we need to stop being defensive about these things and just admit the moral truth. We don't have to say we would have done better in the same situation. I'm not saying that I would have done better in the same situation. Maybe you would not have done better in the same situation. It's just that in retrospect, we certainly, especially because there is a future ahead of us that involves nuclear weapons, we've got to get right our moral evaluations. And you can't drop bombs on cities and wipe out entire populations. You cannot do that. And just because someone wears a Roman collar and goes on the internet and says you can, doesn't mean that's true. We'd love to hear from you. I know we're gonna hear from a lot of you. This is very controversial. I don't think it should be. It's a very easy one for a Catholic if you think through the implications of killing innocent women and children, directly attacking innocent women and children. We'd love to hear from you at focus at catholic.com. That's our email address, focus at catholic.com. I'm Cy Kellett, your host. See you next time right here on Catholic Answers Focus.